Hey everybody, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today I want to build a inexpensive, but not quite as inexpensive as last time, lighting controller setup. So I bought this rack on eBay, and I want to put together this rack and some drawers and throw all my stuff in it for around 160 bucks. So if you watched my last video on making inexpensive, easy to set up lighting controllers, I showed you this, what I affectionately call my surfboard. And uh, this guy has got my lighting computer on it, it's got a router, it's got some it's got some nodes and all that good stuff, all velcroed down to it. And truth be told, it works pretty well, but it's not really protected, so I have to put it in some other kind of case. In this video, I'm gonna take all this stuff, um, plus probably a few other things, and I'm gonna put it in this case. So it's all in one rack that I can pop on a wheel board or bolt a caster, some casters to and be ready to just roll in, unlid this guy, and get going for only about $160. So first I'm gonna build the rack, then I'm gonna tell you how I built it for so cheap. So the first thing you wanna do is really size up the rack that you have and decide where you wanna put everything in and what you wanna put in it. So I got this 8U rack on eBay and I got a great deal on it. And to be honest, as I was looking, I realized that there's probably a lot of musicians and other people, lighting people, maybe sound people, who buy racks and then realize they don't really need them and they sell them on eBay. So check my link below to uh, go check stuff out on eBay and I get a small commission if you buy through it. Um, you know, this guy I got shipped to my door for like 85 bucks and you know the UPS cost I mean it was probably 35 bucks to ship it so I thought that's a pretty good deal next thing we've got a rack drawer we're gonna put this guy right in and we're gonna put him on the bottom so that I can put some MIDI controllers some cables whatever I'm gonna need down in that rack drawer now because a lot of my stuff isn't rack mountable next I'm gonna put a shelf in here and then on top of that at the very top I'm gonna to put in a power conditioner uh, to be able to provide power to my stuff I got all this stuff on eBay and uh, it's really a great way to save a lot of money for things that people buy and then they realize they don't need they sell it later you can save some good money on it so what I'm gonna do now is bolt all my stuff into my rack and, and show you the result now you can bolt things into racks you know just like this putting stuff in and, and and screwing it in but to tell you the truth my biggest tip for you is this put your rack if you can on the ground like I'm about to do so that this side the front is facing up then it's very easy to just load all your different pieces in and screw in the rack here's really nicely now while we're on that topic should you use a drill to mount your stuff in a rack I wouldn't recommend it uh, I've, I've built a number of racks over the years and you know you can really strip screws easily with a drill even on the lowest setting um, if, and if you damage one of your rack rails you damage one of the screw holes you really can't fix it on a traditional rack like this if you have a IT style rack with cage nuts you could replace it but with a rack rail like this where everything's pre-drilled you can't fix that later so use a screwdriver or maybe even you know one of those cordless screwdrivers but not a full-blown drill I actually use this really great screwdriver and uh, it's ratcheting so you're able to screw things in really easily on the topic of rack shelves when you look online you're gonna find a few options now this one is from a brand called Nave Point which is pretty popular online and it was about 20 bucks it's an okay shelf now here's why you can see here that if I mount it in the way that they designed this shelf and put it in my rack this way, it actually eats up a full rack you with airspace, with just the underside of this thing. And so what I really recommend is getting the other style that usually just hangs off of one rack you. Um, it doesn't support as much weight as one of these, but typically they're a little cheaper and I'll be sure to link to some here. Personally, for this video, I'm actually going to mount this upside down, so it's a handy tray that I can put all my stuff in, maybe zip tie it down, probably Velcro it, and be good to go. Oh, 
And one last tip for rack shelves. If you've got this kind where you've got to get both ears lined up, the front and the back, then you're going to want to make sure you put this in your rack very first. You don't have to bolt it down first, you don't have to screw it in, but you need to get it in there because you're going to have to tilt it like this to fit in. And if you put all your other gear in first, you're going to have problems. All right, so now I've settled all my stuff in and here's what I ended up with. I tried a few configurations before I found what would work just right for me. So on the front side, we've got first our rack drawer, which perfectly fits the M Touch and M Play very nicely. Love that console. Then we've got our rack shelf here near the top, and at the very top, we've got our power distribution unit. Now let's flip around to the back side. On the back side, we see the same story rack drawer on the bottom, and I got a one use spacer panel. I'll link to everything I got down below. And the, the spacer panel's really here so that I can just put the power cable right in there once I close the drawer, close it up and it doesn't get caught or fall out of the lid. Then I've got this big gap of space right here. I think I'm going to keep a MIDI controller there. And I've got my shelf on top. And you know from the front it looks like it's really close to that power unit, but truth be told, when you really look in there, there there's actually about two rack U of air in there, plus it's vented from below. So I'm not too worried about my mini PC overheating or anything like that. Um, I don't tax it that hard anyways. And I've got plenty of access from the back to line up all my stuff, my computer, my router, and any nodes, and have plenty of room to be able to plug in the outputs, etc. Now, in a future version of this, what I really want to do, once I get this wired up and use it a few times, is I'd love to get a rack panel across the back that's got my DMX outputs on it or that mounts my nodes. Um, if I get some rack mount nodes later, just mounts those nodes right here in the back so I can plug in all my datas, be ready to go. Now, I'm gonna wire up all my stuff and uh, we'll do a quick recap. And boom, we're wired. So, while my neighbor takes a quick break from mowing his lawn, let's talk about what I did. I put together here for about 160 bucks again, full details below with all the links, this really great inexpensive rack setup that I can now use to take a portable lighting console anywhere. And this could be a variety of programs. You know, I could put my Light Shark LS1 on this shelf, maybe put a piece of foam on top of it, send it off. You know, I've got my Onyx, my M Touch and M Play right now in the drawer. Got a PC running the software. I've got a case below that I put my 22 inch touch screen in, you know, a Pelican style case, and I'm good to go. I've got all my stuff plugged in in the back, so my DMX nodes, my computer, my router are all pre-wired. Next steps there is I'll probably get a PoE switch so that I can run my nodes off of PoE. Got my nodes plugged in right here in the back. Real easy, just grab, plug the DMX jacks into, off we go. Again, rack panel would be nicer, maybe the future. And I've got my loom of cables here coming off of everything to get my USBs for my M-Touch M-Play, to get my data, um, if I need Ethernet up here for a computer or another node, and power for my monitor as well. Extra outlets still available here in the back. And then this power conditioner in particular has three outlets on the front as well. So my point here is not that this is the end-all be-all way of doing things. And sure, this isn't gonna win Rack Wiring of the Year award, but you know what? I don't think that's even a real award. So while my neighbor takes a quick break from cutting his grass, I just want to say that building a rack that's easy to deploy and save you time when you're setting up a console is not that difficult and it doesn't have to be expensive either. I know you can go down the rabbit hole and I've gone down the rabbit hole like this before where you start looking at all these different rack pieces and buying a new rack. I mean this rack itself new is a $200 rack or more, depending on where you get it. And I built this whole thing, you know, shelves, drawer, shelf drawer, power conditioner, blank panels, all for under that much money. So it doesn't have to be expensive and it really can save you a lot of time. So I hope this, as well as the first video, which you can see here, have inspired you to maybe speed up your own console setup. If you have, give me a like and let me know in the comments what you did 
and maybe share some pictures. I know you can't hear in the comments, but you know, upload them somewhere and give me a link. I'd love to see it. Until then, subscribe and sh be sure to check out LearnStageLighting.com. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.